Welcome to CS Beginner Bits. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to create a dynamic array using pointers. A pointer is a variable that contains a memory address. They call them pointers because they can literally point to whatever value is being stored at the address it holds. Before we start making the dynamic array, let's go over how pointers work. In a pointer declaration, the data type tells you what kind of variable the pointer will point to. The star symbol tells a computer that what follows is a pointer. The only value you can assign to a pointer is a memory address. In order to get the memory address, you need a reference operator to tell the computer to go look up the address of K. So now P contains the address of K, which is AF2701. Now that you've stored the address of K in pointer P, you can use P to find out what value is in variable K without even having to refer to K itself. This process of fetching values from their specified locations involves the deference operator. So, in summary, a reference will return the address, and a deference will return the value that lives there. In dynamic arrays, two special operators are needed. The new operator for declaring variables during runtime, and the delete operator for destroying the variable created during runtime. Yes, dynamic variables, including dynamic arrays, can be created during runtime when a program is running. The beauty of a dynamic array is that it can expand and contract during the execution of a program. In other words, you can change the number of elements as many times as you want during the program execution. This is because pointers have the ability to allocate memory during runtime. Unlike other variables, pointers contain only memory addresses. Therefore, they can be used to manipulate memory. Here is how to make a dynamic int array. The pointer k will be the dynamic array. n is the variable for the number of elements in the array. That will be user input. Now here is where the new operator comes in. Since the program doesn't initially know how big your array is going to be, you need new to create an array during runtime. This array needs an initial size, so let's make that size 4. A for loop lets you put in n different array elements. After you input your elements into the array, you can display the contents of the array with another for loop. A word of warning. You don't want to forget the delete operator since you could accidentally use up all your memory if it isn't destroyed before you terminate the program. So always conclude the program by deleting the dynamic variables you create. 